Hey there guys. Today's going to mark the beginning of a total revisit of my sunken greenhouse project. As some of you may remember, several months back we had a huge hailstorm that came through this area with golf ball and larger size hail, and it pretty much damaged virtually every structure on my property, and the greenhouse was definitely no exception. Uh, structurally, all the framing was fine, but definitely all of the polycarbonate panels and the trim and everything like that uh, was pretty much destroyed, and it no longer functioned as a greenhouse. So today I am going to be talking about the repairs that I'm going to be making to make it a functioning greenhouse again, as well as the improvements that I want to make to it to make it even better than before, uh, because I really do believe with every um, <laughs> bad thing or downfall or setback that happens, uh, there's usually some opportunity in there to um, you know, make lemonade out of those lemons. Uh, I guess that's uh, too cliche, but you know, that's the first thing that came to mind. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to talk about the repairs and improvements I'm going to make on this. And then uh, later on, you're going to see uh, these happen in uh, follow-up videos. So I think I will probably start with the roof and then I'll work my way down. All right, starting with the top of the greenhouse, pretty much everything on this slope is going to remain the same. I'm gonna repair it with the same polycarbonate roofing that I had on it before with the same trim and it will virtually look identical. Um, I will be reinstalling the solar fan that uh, you might've remembered was here. But what will be different is that I plan on adding some rails either horizontally along these purlins or vertically so that I can have some shade panels that will slide across this uh, to provide a little bit of shade during our transition times of the fall and the spring. Obviously this is Arizona so uh, this greenhouse easily gets warm and uh, the difficulty for me is just extending that season um, from instead of just right up in the middle of winter um, extending the season a little bit further into the spring and a little bit further into the fall and I'm thinking that the shade panels will do just that. Um, one thing that I am leaning towards is having a shade cloth that slides up from the bottom or from the top and that will also provide a little bit of hail resistance or a hail protection uh, because obviously this was uh, damaged by hail but i'm not just sure on that so i would appreciate any suggestions that you guys might think of um, either having panels that will individually slide left to right or a shade cloth that will slide from the bottom or the top to give this a bit more shade as well as hail protection Now the back side of this greenhouse roof will be a completely different story. This is the north side of the greenhouse and I originally had it coated in polycarbonate roofing just like the front side or the south side, but in reality it was kind of a waste of material because this doesn't get any sun during the winter or the spring and the fall in the times that I would actually be using this. In the middle of summer, it obviously gets sun, but <laughs> being that this is Arizona, I never intended to use the greenhouse during the summer. So instead, what I'm gonna be using is uh, corrugated metal roofing that was removed from my house from the hailstorm. Um, some of it has some pretty bad dents, but uh, I've been picking through it and I'll be just adding some of the uh, slightly dented uh, panels and uh, I think it'll just provide a nice covering. Um, it will allow a little bit more of the thermal transition because the metal is such a good uh, conductor, but I don't really anticipate that being too much of a problem. If I you know, kind of feel that, I can always add some foam insulation. Um, afterwards. Now that we're inside, this is where I believe the majority of my efforts will take place regarding new changes to the greenhouse. Obviously redoing the roof is going to be a big job in itself, but really nothing's changing from what was previously done, with the exception of adding the shading element, whatever I decide to end up doing on that. But on the inside, I want to address some things that I never really followed through on during the original build. And first and foremost is going to be some sort of rock retaining wall along this portion of, I guess, the dirt or rock shelf that I have created when I dug this out originally. And what that's going to entail is digging some sort of footer, maybe like 12 inches down or a little bit further down in this area so that I can uh, do a mortared rock wall 
here. And then I may replace these watering shelves that I had originally put here just with this framing um, with some sort of poured concrete uh, slab. And then I will uh, reinstall the polycarbonate panels so that I can still shed the water um, over the retained uh, portion of the retaining wall um, as I originally did just so I don't get water and stuff uh, down there that's degrading the wood panels that I have uh, behind this retaining wall. So that will definitely be probably the more majority of the physical labor um, and it will take uh, quite a bit of time. Um, my other option is also to, instead of just doing that footer, um, putting some sort of wire mesh back here, tying it into the, so the, so the subsoil or the rock and then just creating a concrete retaining wall slash shelf there. That will probably be uh, that would probably be the strongest option. Um, but that's kind of what I'm thinking of now, and I definitely want to do it because um, even though this is a very uh, a very hard rock soil mixture, uh, most of it's decomposed granite. Um, it still does slough off uh, when it gets water on it, or if you pick at it with your fingers enough. Um, so I just want to tidy that up, uh, number one, for durability and longevity, but number two, I think it'll just look a lot nicer as well. The other change I want to make to the inside, in addition to the retaining wall, is the removal of this post. This was probably one of the biggest questions that people had during the original build, is why I would put a post right in the middle of the walkway, kind of in an awkward area. And I don't disagree that that is definitely, it's just, it doesn't look good, it's kind of in the way. Um, but the reason I originally put it there wasn't necessarily because this beam that I put up top was not strong enough to carry the load of the greenhouse, but it was because we get very high winds in this area. I'm on a small little hilltop and we can get winds up to 60 to 65 and sometimes 70 miles an hour on a yearly basis. Uh, I understand that's not like tornado winds or anything like that, but it is a pretty good uh, uh, amount of wind. And I was afraid of the greenhouse being that it's so close to the ground and having that kind of slight arc um, almost acting like an airplane's wing, uh, creating lift. So if winds were, were pushing over it, it would maybe rack it up and down and potentially weaken some of the other portions of the structure and the next thing you know, it goes down. So I always just wanted to have some support or anchoring to the base to where uh, a racking or movement was not able to happen. But I've since really just hated having it here. So my plan for the change is to add a few cross members up here and then uh, weld some steel posts to this retaining wall top. And then even though it'll be slightly offset, I think it'll still give a lot of support uh, for upward or downward movement of this beam if we ever had uh, violent winds going across. So look for that to be the other change um, happening. And then I also didn't mention, I also would be doing that retaining wall. I wanna do it on this backside as well. Uh, just to give that a nice look, um, <laughs> just just to kind of make the greenhouse uh, nicer. And the last thing I'll talk about inside the greenhouse is the cooling tube. Not that it's going to get that much of my attention, but I know people will be asking about it and I just wanted to address it. This, like the retaining wall issue, is another one of those areas that I just didn't follow through on. I have hand dug a trench about 75 feet uh, that direction into the desert and I have a six inch uh, PVC pipe going. And when wind does flow through here, either by fan or just natural uh, uh, movement, of the wind it is about 15 degrees cooler which is not that substantial um, so I'm probably not going to do any more on it unless I get access to a backhoe um, and can make the tunnel probably <laughs> twice as deep or three times as deep and maybe uh, twice as far um, because I just can't dig anymore out into my desert for uh, such a little return on investment. I think the shade panels or the shade cloth is going to do a much better job of regulating the heat with the solar fan and then uh, also using these doors that you see behind me. So anyway, I just wanted to address it uh, just in case folks are asking. I definitely think the concept is very sound. Um, it's just uh, <laughs> just something I need to have some uh, machinery here 
to help me do it properly uh, and I'm not going to just bring a, a rent a backhoe just for that uh, it would be you know when I get ready to build a in-ground cistern or something else that makes sense uh, to spend the investment on and then the last change but certainly not the least important at least in my wife's eyes is to add some railing along these steps going into the greenhouse this again was one of those things that i meant to do on the original build but just never got around to doing it so this is as good a time as any so um i think that is going to be it um i think i'll let you go and then uh the next video on this greenhouse will be getting stuff done all right, so hopefully that was informative or at the very least maybe interesting and maybe gave you a good idea of what my game plan is uh, and whether it's a good one or not. Um, and also for those of you who are more interested in the gardening and greenhouse type uh, subjects, uh, maybe this will give you something to look forward to versus all of the travel trailer and welding type things that I've been doing more recently. Um, also for the things that I mentioned about the retaining wall uh, on the watering shelves, uh, you know, for that kind of dirt area, as well as the uh, shade versus or shade cloth versus shade panels um, I'm definitely welcoming any ideas you guys might may have if people are thinking that the shade cloth is a better idea or the shade panels um, or whatever so uh, definitely throw them out there uh, uh, I'm all ears so as always I appreciate you guys watching check me out on Instagram uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this and uh, we will see you next time and it's probably gonna be the 12 volt wiring Fingers crossed on the travel trailer. <laughs> See ya.